gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. His hands can't hit, but his eyes can't see. So that's what happened. Welcome to Zaire, the heartland of Africa. Ali and Foreman are now in the ring. That man looks pretty serious himself right there. Cracks a little smile as he looks towards that camera. There's a face of determination. 220 pounds of sheer muscle, a strong, speedy individual with tremendous courage. And now we have a man at ringside who knows quite a bit about it. And David, I'm going to throw it over to you. Yes, I'm sitting here next to Joe Fraser. And Joe, I was just wondering at the moment, what are your impressions thus far? What do you sense of the mood? I saw you at ringside over the other side. Hi, Jim. How you doing? How you doing, Joe, baby? Okay. Good to see you. Uh, the main thing about it, uh, David, uh, both guys look like they're in good shape. Uh, they all seem like they're in good spirits. Uh, everybody kidding around with each other. I can see the good fight. Nobody look like they're afraid of each other. That's a joke. <laughs> Are you making any predictions? Well, I guess anyway from 1 to 15, I uh, hope it'll be a good fight. And I take <laughs> on the champion. <laughs> you're backing the champion. I better believe it. By, and between 1 and 15, you're taking any range. It could, could it actually go the full distance? Well, I would say yeah, then I'd say no. You know, I, I really don't know what to say because I haven't visited the camp uh, so far. I just seen uh, news media and different things, what the guys be doing, but uh, I don't really know what's but going Joe, on. But Joe, Joe, one, one question. Yes, Do you yes. really think that Ali has a chance? Now, you know. Uh, uh, the way I feel about Jimmy, uh, uh, don't mind going, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. Uh, the guys, is uh, two men out there, and uh, everybody on their own. That's right. And uh, I think the guy got a good chance. I mean, he got two hands. He's been working for two months all together, so therefore, he should know what he has you to do. You respect his skills. Oh, I respect it all, but all guys with two hands, believe Beautiful. me. We should have a good fight, then. It's getting very close to fight time. Blow by blow commentary is going to be by Mr. Bob Sheridan. We'll be taking over in a moment or two to give us the blow by blow. And at the end of the first round, we'll come back, <coughs> Joe, for a comment from you. Well, I think it should be a real good fight. And somehow, you guys just got me here working. How about that? I come to have a... A vacation and watch the fight. Hey, I'm calling blow by blow for free. Watch it, boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> next time, next time you're going to get five million dollars for working this time. Yeah, how about that? Good. I don't mind doing. I enjoy. It. That's a nice thought, isn't it? Jim around, so therefore it's always nice being in his company and yours. Well, you know, Thank I love you, you Joe. Joe. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting the stare on each other. George Foreman has that serious look. Ali definitely talking to him. Look at the stare on George Foreman. Look at Ali. Give him the word. So the stage is set. We're just about ready to begin round one. The heavyweight championship of the world at stake. There can be no more pure form of sport than a heavyweight championship fight when two individuals finally tune athletes climb into the ring. This time, the championship is at stake, and $5 million will be paid to both fighters. Ali ready, Foreman ready. We're waiting for the opening bell. The enthusiasm begins to mount here. One thing we want to look out for is just how fast this man, George Foreman, will open. As we mentioned, in his past several fights, he hasn't gone in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. Can Ali dance and stay away from him? Is George Foreman's thundering punches going to be too much for him? Is the left hook that is so devastating, the tremendous left hook, going to stop Ali? Here we go, Ali quickly across the round. Round one, Ali bouncing around, shifting left for right. George moves slow, Ali gets the first punch in, a light right hand taken on the forehead by George Foreman, the champion. Foreman moving slow, trying to stalk his man. Ali looks uh, like he's ready to go here. He's not staying away. He's going after his man. Foreman comes in. Foreman a bit cautious in the first round, looking to drop that left hook. Foreman stalks his man to the far corner. There's that left uppercut and jab to the body of Muhammad Ali. Ali tries to hang on to the head of George Foreman. Foreman dances now. Moves Ali with a right hand lead again. Has lead confused with that right hand lead which I haven't seen too many times before Ali certainly dancing slipping punches sliding around both ways Foreman's idea is to back him off into the corner and when they get tight to wail away with that vicious hook to the body of Muhammad Ali Ali lashes out with a light left a straight right hand 
forehead of Goldsmith. George Foreman. George Foreman again takes a light left inside as he tries to work to the body of Muhammad Ali. That's Ali on your right. Foreman on the left. A wild left hand thrown by George Foreman. Taken on the front of the head of Ali. The pace is tremendous in round one. George Foreman with his face to you. Ali to the left. Ali tries to time up. He's leaning on Foreman. Foreman with a vicious uppercut misses. Ticket it for the head of Ali. Ali stands back, ties his man up, leans on the rope, tells him, whispers in his ear, taunting him. So far, Ali looks pretty impressive in round one. This Foreman throws a light glancing blow, ticket it for the head of Ali, but goes over the shoulder of Muhammad Ali. Ali shifts right, bounces left, takes the light left on the side of the head. Wild left hand thrown on the side of the head of Muhammad Ali. Look at the referee, Zach Clayton, having his problems. One minute left in round number one. The heavyweight championship between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, live via satellite, direct from Zaire, Africa. That punch did no damage. That one did. Two wild right hands taken on the side of the head of Muhammad Ali. Ali continues to try to tie his man up. Zach Clayton separates him. Wild left hand, vicious hook. There's a real strong right hand just underneath the heart. And Muhammad Ali is taking some punishment now. About 25 seconds left in the round. Ali, face left, throws the straight right hand. That right hand lead has George Foreman slightly confused, but a straight left jab thrown by Foreman has Ali in the corner. Ali dances back, hangs on. What a tremendous, tremendous face in round number one. The hook to the body of Muhammad Ali. Zach Clayton, the referee, separates him. About eight seconds left in the round. Round one, Foreman and Ali ending round one. After the break, the champ has Ali on the ropes. ESPN celebrates... ...man who's fought him, Joe Frazier. What, what did you think of that round? Well, I would say that the, the round was very even because I see the rounds look very close. You wouldn't call that round for Ali? No, I said pretty even because he hit him some pretty good shots in there also. I said about two or three good shots in the face, but George Landon body shots also. So you'd call that one even? I... Here we go, round number two. The determined Ali got off his stool in between rounds. George Foreman sat down all the way. Ali with a back up against the rope. He's talking to Foreman still. Ali tries to tie him up. No real damage done in that exchange at all by either fighter. Round two just underway. That wild left hand that George Foreman throws is trying to get to Ali. I can't see any puffiness over the right eye of George Foreman at this point, although Ali has hit him on the button. Ali is definitely headhunting with his right hand lead. A good right hand taken on the left side of the jaw by Muhammad Ali. And there's those vicious hooks to the midsection of Ali. Ali has a tremendous strength to the midsection. George Foreman is headhunting himself. Ali tries to hang on. The pace not quite what it was in round one. Ali backs up, leans out, takes advantage of the reach. Foreman tries to work the body. Neither one of those punches did any damage. None of those punches are doing any damage at all. None, absolutely none. There's a light flicking left hand to the face of George Foreman. Foreman pushing the head back of Ali, and Ali hangs on. This hanging on tactic is important for Muhammad Ali, who must take a breather now on that left hand, light left, taken on the chin of Ali. That wild left hand is not scoring. It's not getting through. Left jab right in the button, thrown by Ali. Another left jab. Ali showing his flinching speed as Foreman continues to wail at the body of Muhammad Ali. Another left hand on the right eye of George Foreman, the right eye that was cut in training. Still cannot see if it's puffy at all. George Foreman continues to stalk Ali. Tries to get through with a straight left jab, an improved left jab. There's a vicious, awkward, but very powerful hooks. Both hands, left hooks, and what would really be a, a right cross is a hook to George Foreman. Misses the left hand. Ali inviting him to punch. Shows him the tremendous Ali slipping of punches as he twists the body to the side. Ali backs up and jabs as he backs up. About 45 seconds left in round two. An even fight to this point. The pace is definitely slowed down in round two. Oh, a great left hand! An over and under combination. The left hand and then the right on the jaw taken by the champion, George Foreman. There's a left hand in the eye of Foreman. Ali scoring 
taking some punches here. These punches are not hurting him that he's taking on the side of the head. 30 seconds left in round two. Look at Ali, continues to talk and talk. Definitely serious, tremendous combination by Muhammad Ali. It's a left hand and then that straight right to the jaw. He's trying to do the damage with the left jab, a lightning flicking left to the right eye of George Foreman. 10 seconds left in round number two. Now he's pulling what he did against Joe Frazier, shaking his head. No, no, he says. The left hand gets through again. There's the bell, ending round two. An incredible round. What did you make of that, Joe Frazier? I still said around was a close, very close round. Because, hell, what you're doing, very people looking at the fight about him doing it. But George is banging that body shot. He's hurt in that body. And otherwise, you shouldn't stay on that road. Do you think Ali is making a mistake tactically then every time he does that? I stay there. He needs to move. He don't need to stay on that rope. He did that with you in the first fight with you at Madison Square Garden. He George stayed on the rope and you hit him a lot. He don't move or cut George. George is walking down. He needs to move. He only need to stay on that rope. For what reason on the rope? Jim Brown. Muhammad Ali is punishing George Foreman even though he is on the rope. He is getting some tremendous blows in. And at some point, that can tell on Foreman. Is Foreman vulnerable to the blows Ali's been striking, do you think? I would say, well, yeah, I don't know. We were able to observe a little bit of puffiness under the left eye of George Foreman. The left eye, not the right eye. Oh, what a combination landed by Ali to the face of George Foreman. Round three just underway. Very even fight. I would have to score round two slightly in favor of Muhammad Ali. There's the left flicking in the face of George Foreman. George Foreman backing Ali to the ropes. There's a vicious left hook to the body. Misses the left again, the right to the body. Thrown by George Foreman. Ali is getting away with hanging on to the head of Foreman. Foreman will push and try to set up his punch. Watch him push. There's the right hand. When he pushes, he tries to do it off of that. That's his secret. Continues to work downstairs on Muhammad Ali. Round three. Very close. Heavyweight championship fight. Ali on the left. Foreman misses the right hand. Ali scores with his own right. Foreman setting him up against the rope. What a vicious, fast combination by Ali. Ali definitely showing the hand speed in this fight. There's the chant. Ali Bumaye. That means Ali kill him in the sporting sense of court. Ali making Foreman look a bit awkward. That punch did no damage again. Ticket it to the head of Muhammad Ali. But that punch did. Super confident. Foreman looks unusually slow with his hands. But look at this now. All of a sudden, he opens up four punches downstairs on Ali. Ali, of course, has protection around that area he was being hit by. Ali showing the ability to punch inside against George Foreman. Now the fighters move across the ring. A right hand lead by Foreman this time. Another right hand. A good right hand taken on the left side of the cheek on the jaw of Muhammad Ali. That was the best punch so far for George Foreman. I don't know if you saw it, but it did spin the head around of Muhammad Ali. I have to say the heaviest punch so far was definitely landed by Foreman in that exchange. Ali trying to hang on. Might have been just stunned by that blow. Vicious right hand goes whistling by the nose of Ali. Ali continues to talk to George Foreman. Continues to talk, continues to taunt. 30 seconds left in round number three. Foreman looking for his opening to unload that left hand underneath the heart of Ali and drop the right. There he goes to the right, but it just didn't land that time. Very even fight. 10 seconds left now in round three. Ali showing his combination. The hand speed, left, right, left combination to the head of Foreman. Foreman again takes the right hand. Up next, Ali's combination lands on the grill of Foreman on ESPN Classic Drive-Thru. When is... 
February 23rd on Sports Century, Jackie Robinson broke the major league color barrier. They hated his guts. But these players continued the fight. Was there bigotry toward black players in those days? Absolutely. When I hit the home run, then people started listening. Is the battle for racial equality still raging? Racism is in baseball. I don't care what anyone says. Sports Century, The Disciples of Jackie Robinson, a Black History Month premiere, 8 p.m. February 23rd on ESPN Classic. It'll be a classic Saturday night at 6. Big Ticket presents the high school game that inspired the movie Hoosiers in the Milan Miracle. Then at 7.30, we're there live as these two teams play their 50th anniversary game this Saturday on ESPN Classic. Was Foreman hurt there? Joe Frazier. I would say Joyce is rushing himself too much. He needs to take his time and watch what he's doing. And uh, as time go by, this would tell on him. And uh, I feel like this would tell because not really calming himself, not being calm. Well, anyway, there, that look, that fight, would you say that round went, in fact, to Muhammad Ali? I would say, yeah, that's his round. That round went to win Muhammad Ali. John Daly, the man behind the fight, is here. We'll ask him in the next round. Here we go, round four. Muhammad Ali looks to be the fresher of the two at this point. This is the furthest that George Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. He's in the fourth round against Muhammad Ali, the dancing master with tremendous hand speed. The left hand scores again. Foreman looking for the opportunity. Looks has a tremendous look of determination. Staggered, Foreman staggered, definitely. Right on the button, right on the jaw of George Foreman. That's probably the hardest Foreman has been hit since Gregorio Peralta opened his eye in the first fight. Another right hand taken on the left side of the head of George Foreman. Foreman's face beginning to show signs of puffiness around the right eye, but below the right eye. Wild right hand thrown by Foreman misses the intended target, the jaw of Ali. Foreman tries to score. Ali ties him up in tight. Zach Clayton doing the job separating the fighters. Ali rifles a right to the head of Foreman. Foreman tied up. Ali is getting away with it, tying his man up. Is Ali facing you, Foreman, the strength in his back, you can see, as he tries to work downstairs on Ali. Ali hanging on and continues to get away with it. Ali looks uh, a bit concerned, but uh, what would you expect in there against George Foreman? Foreman not scoring these punches at all. Light, pouring punches, unusual for George Foreman. Maybe the heat is getting to George Foreman, as his leg at that point looked a bit on the rubbery side. Ali scores a light combination there, but no serious damage done. Both fighters beginning to show signs of a little bit of tiring now. And you have to expect it with the temperatures close to 80 here in Zaire, Africa. Neither one of those punches were damaging to the body of Ali. George Foreman's legs look almost weary now. Does not look strong in the legs to me at all. Right hand missed, the second one just clipped Ali in the back of the head. Muhammad Ali with that straight left hand. Now the left hook trying to catch the right eye of George Foreman, no doubt about it. Ali hanging on behind the head. Foreman hasn't been able to push Ali off and set him up. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing him. 30 seconds left in round four. Foreman continues to come on. Ali backs up. Not as much circling as we expected. Ali hanging tough, not coming in and moving out. Left hand misses, goes over the shoulder of Ali, and again Ali hangs on. Zach Clayton, the referee, separates the two fighters. There's the vicious left. No real serious damage done. Ali is getting his hand up. The wild left by the jaw of Ali. Look at Foreman's face. He does look tired. He doesn't have the bounce in his legs. Misses again. The bell ends round four. This stadium is intense. John Daly, responsible for bringing this fight into being with Hank Schwartz and Don King. Is it living up to your expectations, John Daly? It is absolutely fantastic, and Ali's winning all the way for me. And I think he's going to win it within another four rounds. A prediction there, a prediction there from John Daly on Ali. When we return, Ali comes off the ropes today's foreman. Here we go, the bell sounds, round number five. Ali stood through part of the round as he allows Foreman to back him up. 
Foreman scored a pretty good right hand that time to the body of Muhammad Ali. Ali's face showing no signs of being hit at all as he takes a light left hand. This is a straight left hand thrown by Ali. Face of Foreman beginning to look marked. No cuts, nobody's been down, we're in round five. Foreman definitely has a puffy right eye. Straight left hand taken by Foreman. Ali continues to talk to him. Foreman trying to back Ali up and really throws the right hand to the body of Muhammad Ali. Doesn't seem to bother Ali as Ali stands on his toes, works downstairs, goes downstairs. Good left hook by Ali, good left hook by Foreman. Again, the right hand of Ali scoring to the left side of the face of Foreman as the infighting is really better for Muhammad Ali upstairs anyway. Careful, careful, careful. Here's some real good shots to the body oh, thrown by Foreman. Foreman on the left of your screen, Ali on the right. Ali leans up against the ropes. Right hand taken on the gloves by Ali. There's a real wild right hand taken on the back of the head of Ali. Foreman with a wild right again. Ali looks like he's trying to rest in this round. His punches are not doing any damage though. Vicious right thrown to the body of Ali. Wild right misses the head of Ali. The left taken on the glove of Ali, the right glove. Foreman pouring, pouring, pouring. Foreman trying to set him up, trying to set him up to the body. Ali does look tired now. Foreman seems to be coming back with more steam. Scores with a light right hand. One minute left in round five. This is George Foreman's round all the way. Ali, this is a cruising round for him. Foreman wailing away, and Ali says, is that the best call? Foreman just working the body, hasn't hit Ali except once with the face. Neither fighter has been down. Ali picks it up a little bit, about 40 seconds left in round number five. for most of that round, as he was for most of that round. I must say, I don't understand those tactics, Joe, of staying on the ropes and letting him hit him. Well, what he's doing, he's using the old pro uh, skill on George. George Fallen, boy. George, if you remember when I put him in? Here we go with round number six. There was some confusion in between rounds as officials in attendance are tightening up the ropes to prevent Ali from leaning back. And Angelo Dundee, the trainer of Ali, came racing across the ring and really did some yelling. They're still screaming back and forth about the ropes, whether they want them tight or loose. Zach Clayton separates the two fighters. Ali goes head hunting again. Oh, great left hand taken on the face of George Foreman. Ali scored three in a row that time. Foreman's right eye looking to be closed. Ali has tremendous look of confidence on that face. These punches are landing, bouncing off the eye of the heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Foreman has his work cut out for him. Tremendous crowd here at 20th of May Stadium. Now Ali back.
backs up against the ropes, takes a low blow, not intended by George Foreman. Light left on the break by Ali. Foreman has no steam in any of those punches, and you don't need me to tell you that. Ali leans on him. Ali sits back on the ropes and tells Foreman to come in. Foreman looks like, uh, well, a bit arm weary until that right hand is trying to set Ali up. Ali doing exactly what he's actually not supposed to do, leaning up against the ropes and taking the punches of the heavy hitting George Foreman. Foreman doesn't really look to have that tremendous punch anymore, but I'm sure that when he gets a little respite here as they're cruising a little bit now in round six, that uh, he'll be able to deliver the thundering, booming, rifling shots that he's capable of delivering at any time. A minute left in round six. Muhammad is allowing Foreman to come in on him, inviting him in and counterpunching, inviting him in, talking to him. Angelo Dundee screaming from the corner, Ali, get off those ropes. But Ali continues to talk to Foreman. Straight left hand on the chin of George Foreman. Foreman paws in. He's looking for room to unload that right hand. 30 seconds left in the round. Now Ali squares away, watching box. He loves to put on combinations in the last few seconds of the round. Right hand misses. That right hand scored by Ali. Look at these combinations that Ali lands. The speed of Ali to this point has outclassed the strength and booming punches of Foreman. Neither fighter has been down. Round six. More rope dope after the break on Drive Through. On the next Real Classics, one missed catch that changed his life forever. Can't you make a comeback? From what? Not a has been. I'm a never was. But if he could do it all over again. Play the game again. That's Carol Dangerfield! It'll be the best of times. Robin Williams and Kurt Russell are about to get even. Let's go, Jack. Real Classics with Burt Reynolds, 8 Eastern Sunday, only on ESPN Classic. Ali looking, Jimmy, to become the second man in the history of the heavyweight ranks to regain his title, and he looks impressive to this point. He's looking fantastic right now. He's laying on the ropes. Everyone is saying, get off the ropes. But I think he's resting. He knows that Foreman is basically spent. I think he's going to try to take it as far as he can and then try to knock him out. Do you think Foreman is in that bad of shape? No, I think he's fighting foolish. I don't think he's in bad shape. He's fighting real foolish. And he got that experience. I made a statement earlier that anything can happen. This man got experience. This man got a youth. It's all depends how he's been trained for him. And he's fighting smart, real smart. Yes, I'd hate to predict it, any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong, those people who said. Here we go, round number seven, and the fighters can't wait to get at each other, as this time, Big Foreman comes stalking across the ring, delivering some light uh, hooks to the body of Ali that certainly are doing no problems or causing any problems to Muhammad Ali. Ali spins him around, out of the corner now. Ali is definitely in command as far as the movement in the ring is concerned. Foreman looking for the opportunity to unload. The left hand again in the face of Foreman. Definitely Ali is scoring more punches than George Foreman. The punches to the body of Ali are not hurting him. They're not taking a toll. The man is in tremendous physical condition in that part of his body. Of course, George Foreman tries to work again inside on Ali. Ali pushes his hand away. Again, Ali ties up George Foreman. Foreman doesn't look to have a good bounce on his leg anymore. But of course, Foreman being the one-punch artist that he is, who knows what might happen as the rounds continue. We're in round number seven, midway through. Straight left and a good right hand taken on the side of the head. The tactic by Ali is to jab with the left, throw the right hand and hang on. George 
Bowman, of course, famous for his booming punches. Bowman continues to come in on Ali. He wants Ali bad. It's just a matter of trying to set him up to deliver the real heavy blow. Ali rifles into the right hand. Ali's face is not marked. George Bowman gets in a pretty good left of the body that time underneath the ribcage of Muhammad Ali. Punch was hard to see on television, but he did score a pretty good punch inside. Ali doing what he did to some smaller men, leaning on jo George Foreman. There's a good right uppercut thrown by Foreman. Best punch he's thrown in a couple of rounds. Ali hangs on. Both fighters beginning to show signs of being tired. 30 seconds left in this round seven. Very even fight. Hard to tell exactly who would be up in front. Perhaps by a point, maybe two, one way or the other. Looks like Ali could be up in front with the punches that he's scoring to the head of Foreman. Foreman tries to score some punches. Definitely showing some fatigue in the waning seconds in round seven. Ali continues to talk. Foreman tries to deliver some shots to the body. The bell sounds ending round seven. Up next. As I said earlier, and I think that he knows that he has control. And now we have reached a point where George Foreman's only had one fight this long since February 1970. Only one fight this long since then. What would you say the position is on points at the moment, Joe Frazier? I would say right now that uh, my man is in the lead. I got a feeling that George not going to make it from the looks of it. Now tell me the one thing that people obviously all around the world will be cheering for one or the other, but do you think Foreman's got a killer punch? If he lands one punch, can he save it? Well, I would say, yeah, if it lands on the target, any man can take a punch out, can take it out with one punch. But George is fighting foolish. Here we go, the bell sounds, round number eight, and an even fight here live via satellite, a video techniques presentation worldwide. Ali working to the head of George Foreman. Ali scores again with a light left hand. At that time, a straight left bounces the head back of Foreman. A quick, short jab with the right hand bounces the head around of Foreman. Foreman looking to deliver the real heavy blows. Now he's bouncing better. Almost falls out of the ring. Ali left that punch, twisted his body to the side, and the left hand went kind of over the shoulder. Ali bends him over. Zach Clayton right on the spot, the referee, chairman of the Pennsylvania State Boxing Commission. Ali, it seems to be well, kind of going the way he wants. He's not dancing as much as we thought, but he uh, seems able to control him. Now, it's a pretty good, good heavy right hand taken on the left side of the cheek by Ali. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Again, for Foreman, it seems to be one, or two, maybe three good punches. That punch taken on the gloves, that one slips by the left ear, tries to go with that right uppercut that felled Kenny Norton. The left hand again thrown out by Foreman. Both fighters now very much more fatigued than they were a round or so ago. The heat is pretty high here, around 80 degrees. The humidity is probably 85 to 90. At age 32, Muhammad Ali is bouncing around pretty good for the 24-year-old Foreman hanging pretty tough in there. Again, I caution you to look for the one punch that George Foreman can deliver at any time. This man is devastating, to say the least. These punches are not at this particular time. Try to pull a sneaky right hand on Ali. Ali hanging on, getting away with it. Getting away with it. The left hand taken on the side of Ali's cheek. The left hook again on the side of the gloves. Right hand by Foreman was not effective. The right uppercut did bounce the head a little bit. His punches will not hurt Ali. Ali just takes him, protecting his face at all times, does Ali. Foreman throwing more punches now. Maybe this could be the tactic of Ali to let the man punch himself out. 30 seconds left in round eight. Very even fight. 
Ali, a sneaky right hand. Another sneaky right hand. This time he works over the shoulder of Foreman. predicted it. Angelo said he would knock him out. Angelo came over here and waved to Jim and I. He put his thumb up as if to say if this was exactly what I predicted. Well, I must make one point. Muhammad Ali had been waving at me, winking at me all night because he knew I thought that George Foreman would knock him out. And he is a friend of mine, so he was saying to me after every round, look at me, big fella, because I'm doing it. Fantastic. Fantastic performance. There you see the scene in the ring. I can't see much, much hope of Bob getting a very deep, coherent interview at this moment. I don't think we're going to be able to talk to Muhammad Ali in depth at the moment. But there you see the scene. The whole place is going wild. The people right at the back of the auditorium, they're on their feet too. They're on their feet, is this foot. They're on their feet. They're not on their feet. They're on their feet. Or their foot. There you see the one thing about this Look at that face. Look at that face. Oh, a man who can scarcely believe what has happened to him. Who can scarcely believe what has happened to him. George Foreman, the man who was invincible. George Foreman, the man who was totally invincible. Muhammad Ali is certainly suffering worse punishment in the middle of that ring at the moment. Worse punishment in the middle of that ring than he ever got from George Foreman. And there's George Foreman. Look at that. His head is fallen. He's really, really an injured man. And the man they said that could only float like a butterfly but not sing like a bee has really stuck. George Foreman, the beaten champion. What a moment of tragedy this is. He left here. There he goes. No one in the auditorium paying really any attention to him as he goes. As Muhammad Ali knows from that first fight against Joe Fraser, people are only interested in winners. Look at that sad, dejected head. Look at the people around him. Three or four people, maybe. Nobody wants to mob a beaten champion. The whole, the whole of boxing history has been turned upside down. That lonely figure going into the dressing room was not Muhammad Ali, 
by George Foreman. Meanwhile, the scenes, as you can see them there, the Zaire police and army are trying to protect Muhammad Ali. There he is. There is the picture of the man who has undoubtedly fought his greatest fight tonight, won his greatest victory tonight. Muhammad Ali on his way to his dressing room. There he goes. Amis sportifs. In fact, there is disappointment. There is enormous disappointment that he's going, actually. There are people yelling for him to stay. Oh, and there are people trying to fight off the press. Look, there they... The press of people, I should add, in case people think that that is a Nixonian attack on the media. With him just behind him, you may have seen Bob Foster there, former light heavyweight champion. George Foreman. Ali unleashes a combination on the very fatigued George Foreman. He's coming up here now. Right hand misses. Watch the left. There's the left. Now a straight right hand. That one spins his head. That's the knockout punch right there. It was a straight right hand taken right on the face of Muhammad Ali. This is the dressing room of Muhammad Ali. David Frost is making his way down there. Ali talking to Louis Saria. Another one of his handlers there. Muhammad Ali hugging Dr. Freddy Pacheco, the physician that said, yes, he will beat him. And Angelo Dundee, the only single man that I know that said he would knock out George Foreman. And Angelo said he was absolutely sure. I couldn't, I didn't believe Angelo, as close a friend uh, as Angelo Dundee is to me, Jimmy, I just didn't believe it. Well, I believe that Angelo believed it because he was absolute about it. Did you notice Ali look in the mirror his dressing room to make sure he wasn't marked? What does this do, Jimmy? Does it open up the heavyweight championship again? It Will he retire? It opens it up. It opens it up. Will he retire? Is he the greatest man that ever fought? Well, right now he is, Bob, I'll tell you. All these because questions. he punched, he boxed, he took punches, he took the best punches that George Foreman had. Well, it was just, I, I was going along with the fight, and I felt, Jimmy, that I was almost talking too much about Ali. Uh, I honestly felt that Muhammad Ali was winning. As I look at my score sheet, I had the first round even, then I had a, Ali winning the second and third round. We're going to have a replay of this uh, knockout round again as our man David Frost is working his way down there. We'll have the entire eighth round again for you. And Jimmy and I will comment on a little slower pace for you. The whole eighth round we'll have for you coming up again. There was just complete phantom on him. Here we go. This is the round eight, the round that Muhammad Ali regained the heavyweight championship of the world. Only the second man in history to do so, Floyd Patterson being the other man. Here, Jimmy, as we look, you can see how he's scoring with the short jabs and tying up uh, George Foreman. Yes. He picked his, his time. Here we go. We've got uh, the dressing room. Bad the once he caught him, he finished. I'm telling you that he has no power. I kept telling you he don't hit hard. And guess what he did in the end? He started fighting dirty. Right. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. His thumb got me now. Right. 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 But I'm smart. Right. I'm a pro. Right. 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 I'm a pro, see? I Tate felt him with my arm reach and then grabbed him until right. I cleared up. He's a pro, bro. A lot of guns, That's the power of all of them. That's how I couldn't get up. He didn't get up with the right hand. He didn't get up. He ain't never got up. I kept talking to him during the fight, too. Congratulations. Am I the greatest of all times? Mohammed, you told me in Deer Lake you were the greatest of all time, and I think everybody out there watching now will say that you've proved oh, it to man who was 
burn me up, too powerful, too strong. I prove that Allah is God. Right. Yes, Elijah Muhammad is a messenger, right. and I have faith in them. And regardless of the world and the pressure, I made it an easy night because Allah has power over all things. If you believe in him, nothing, even George Foreman, will look like a baby. It wasn't a close fight, was it? No, it no, wasn't a close no, fight. No, no, no. Was it close, close before I knocked him out? No, no. 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 Well, you, wait, is this on close? You tell, is it live? Right now. Right. Everybody right. stop talking now. Attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. I'm going to beat Sunday Liston. I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. But I didn't dance. I didn't dance for a reason. I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. Let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad. But I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxers. Staying on the ropes is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Foreman two rounds of steady punching because after that he was mine. Muhammad Ali became the second man in heavyweight history to regain the title. In 1994, at the age of 45, George Foreman recaptured the heavyweight belt with a 10th round KO of Michael Moore, making him the oldest man to win the heavyweight crown. The world premiere of Sports Century, Steve Carlton. Kick offers an inside look at the Patriots' second great Super Bowl season. Both are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, giving you 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. But touchdown, Patriots! This Wilson Super Bowl football, designed exclusively for Sports Illustrated, is also free when you use your credit card. You can't get this one-of-a-kind collectible anywhere else. <laughs> All now, you'll get all three great Patriots collectibles free. Don't miss your chance to celebrate the NFL champion New England Patriots with this fantastic Super Bowl package, available exclusively from Sports Illustrated. Call now. Ever wondered what it's really like to be a soldier? What do you got? I have a sit rep from Alpha Company. You ready to be verified? Verified! Put yourself in the picture with this free video. You'll see over 200 great jobs in the Army and over 180 in the Army Reserve. You'll also see what skills you learn, how you can earn money for college, even what soldiers do in their free time. Call 1-800-984-ARMY now and get this free t-shirt and your free video. Put yourself in the picture and see what it's really like to become an Army of One. We had an exciting first-round game at Boardwalk and Baseball Super Bowl of Sports Trivia. Pennsylvania defeated the Cardinal of Stanford 255 to 195. Fellas, you gave it a go, and your ties will be you remember them always here on the program. I do. Well, I need this to match the jacket. Thanks. Like Rod Stewart said, I guess I wear it well. Thank you very much. Quakers, congratulations. You're moving on to the second round where you were light and fast. In this one, we'll look for you again with blazing saddles, right? Well, thanks for watching. Tonight. I'm Chris Berman. We'll see you next time. The game that inspired the movie Hoosiers, Saturday on ESPN Classic. At the dawn of the 1970s, there was an emerging hero in New York. He was a jet, but he could not fly. Suddenly, out of Butte, Montana,